Hey, Bobby here with Coder Foundry, and we've recently been exploring the render modes with Blazor Movie. Today, we're going to talk about WebAssembly or WASM. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series detailing the other render modes, links to those will be in the description below. But in this video, we're primarily going to focus on what makes the WASM render mode special when you compare it to SSR in the other available modes. So let's take a look. Now, all of these pages kind of work the same way, and that's one of the beauties of Blazor is that you can use the same component and just change how it's rendered. Um, but with the exception of when we go to WASM, we need things to run on the client and not just on the server. Up until this point, nothing ran on the client, and that's a good thing. Security is easier to do there. We have secure access to our data. So there's a lot of reasons we want to run it on the server, but with WASM, we need to actually make sure that our application has endpoints for everything that it needs to call. And we also need to make sure that our components can run on the server, exist on the server, but also get triggered to download into the client. All right. So, but when you look at it and we just refresh the page here, it kind of does the same thing. It downloads the, the application into WASM and then it shows our movies okay so it does the same thing but in a little bit different way so the architecture over here is a little bit different a little bit more work a little more pre-planning but i do believe this is the way that people are going to build apps under blazer they're going to use um, wasm and also this auto mode and we're going to go over the, both of these today okay this auto mode will combine signal and wasm together so you can get the best of both worlds Let's look at the code here so when we get to our code here, we have two projects. We have a client project and a server project. And inside of here, if you've been watching, if you follow along on the series here, we do have pages here for each type here. And that's no different here. We have a WASM page here that we can look at, but it's a little bit different because it's referencing a component in the client project. And this is exactly what we want to happen. And we specify our render mode right here on the component itself all right um, and so if i go over to the client side here you can see now i have pages in here and i have my wasm component which is just like the other components we've been looking looking at okay um, they're actually behave and operate the same way but notice here i don't have the attribute in here that says wasm because i told it when i um, referenced it so it has it built in right over here on the server. And so it's a little bit different in how it gets created. All right. But notice here, um, and if you've been following along here, it's the same code here. We have an on um, initialized async event here that calls our endpoint that returns a list of movies, nothing elaborate. Okay. Now we've added this other function here that you can look in your console to see that this actually ran from a WASM component because they're running the console. Um, and you can see that in your JavaScript tools. All right. Uh, so, but the code is identical to the other um, components we've been looking at, and that's a good thing, all right? So this will run on the client. So what happens here is I go back to the server project, and I look at this WASM component here. Because I said render mode WebAssembly, that will cause the .NET runtime and all of the components in this client project to start being downloaded. Now, if you look at the client project here, you can see it is a WebAssembly project. Okay, so it knows because it's in this project, it knows when I call something in this client project, it's got to exist on the client, so I need to start the download process. So anytime we call a WebAssembly component, it's gonna be in our client project, it has to be exist in the client side, and if it doesn't, it'll automatically download it. And then Blazor takes care of that process for us. We don't have to write that process, okay? So that's kind of how it works. But otherwise, it operates and behaves just like the other components that we've been looking at. Notice too, I have the same movie modal here as well, that exists on my client here, and um, it does the same thing. It has a movie details parameter, if it gets a parameter, it displays it. Okay, pretty cool. If not, it just shows a loading screen, All right? Notice here, I don't have to worry about the buttons or anything like that for the WASM here. Um, I just load the movie card, okay? So I'm using the same 
movie card that I used before, and it has the same callback that I showed you in Signal R. It works exactly the same, is that this time it's running on the client. Now, when you think about architecture here, all of your communication to the server has to be done through an API endpoint. That's how it works. And so that um, it just so happens all of our components today are operating through this endpoint, but we need to make sure that everything is hit through a web API. All right. And again, if you go over that, our web API is put together here in our program CS. We have a minimal APIs here that do, do both of the communications, those are popular movies and the current movie that the user clicked on. All right, so if we go over and look at it, and I click on this, no JavaScript, loads in our movie, no matter what I click on, loads in the correct movie. It's really blazingly fast. I don't have any um, arbitrary delays in this to show you how quick this is. Pretty fast. Okay, now notice these are dynamic endpoints. This is making a call out to an, a, an, a, an API endpoint and loading the movie. So if I click here, it's loading it that quickly. Now the API is fast over on movie DP, DB ABI, but just to show you that the speed from here is pretty dramatic and we get this really smooth um, UI interface that's not refreshing the page. It runs just like it should for a client side application. And this page is running completely client side. Now, one of the other exciting features, if we go back and look at the code here, is auto mode. So I'm gonna go over here and look at this. And this time, I call the same component here, movie list WASM, but I changed the mode to render. Now, what happens behind the scenes when this happens is, is if the movie, um, uh, the movie list, this, right, this component exists inside of WebAssembly, it'll run just like it just did a second ago. If it doesn't, it'll run it as a server side render component. Okay. And that's what auto does, but I don't have to create a separate component for that. It'll use it. And that's why when we're doing um, auto mode, both of these exist on the same page. This WASM component exists over here and it's using the same one on the client side. It's just an auto here. I'm passing in render mode auto and this causes the same component to be rendered in a certain way so if it doesn't exist inside of WebAssembly, it'll go out and go try to run it as a server side um, or as a blazer server component and then in the background it's going to start the wasm download process downloading the dotnet runtime and downloading the component and this is super powerful and so if you look at this component here in WASM here, and we go back in here, and it's running using the exact same component here, it'll show you where this console does. So if it's running on the server and you're running inside of Visual Studio, it'll show in your output window in Visual Studio. If it's running on the client, it'll appear in your browser client over there on your console. Okay, in Chrome tools, Dev tools, or whatever tools you're using. So we can look at real quickly. It doesn't behave any different. It's absolute irrelevant to the end user where this how this runs okay and so when i click auto mode it detected if it was in WebAssembly or not if it was it just runs it on the client side if it's not it runs that signal r the great thing about signal r and wasm is I still don't have to write javascript to pop this modal and that's a good thing so they behave and operate the same way it's just where they're running and this wasm auto mode is how we think people are going to build um, these apps going forward. And this is why people are really excited about um, .NET App Blazor. They do think that a lot of people think that the component first framework is worth looking at. And it's also, it's pretty compelling when you compare it to how this is done with other frameworks. And you also have the speed of C Sharp on the back end. And you also can mix and match these modes um, to make the best user experience that you can. So for example here, you can see we've done all five of these in the same app and this home page here is just a static page coming back and this is server side rendered. And I can see a lot of people taking advantage of building pages that are static, they'll just use SSR and then when they're not static, they're gonna come over here and run this in WASM. Well, I hope that helps. Good luck and keep coding.